Hey guys, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. And if you're wondering what I'm wearing, well, last night before I went to bed, I got the bad news. LG is closing down its mobile division. And nope, that's no April Fool's joke, TLDR. LG isn't going to be making and selling any new mobile phones. Instead, they'll be focusing on other growth areas. If you want all the details, I'll leave a link to the Gadget Match article down below. Now, today, like anyone who has lost someone or something, I woke up feeling a little bit sad. As a tech creator, I have many fond memories covering LG, and I'm fond of many LG smartphones. As a lover of all things tech, I'm also sad to see one of the major players bite the dust, so to speak. Especially one that has done its part to push the boundaries of this space. So before I continue with regular programming videos that were planned for this week, I figured let's spend some time to take a trip down memory lane and celebrate the legacy left behind by LG Mobile. Oh. Just in case you're wondering, this is actually a blanket that LG had sent me for Christmas uh, that I'm wearing as a scarf to kind of commemorate uh, the occasion. Now, I was a bit late to the game. I mean, I had played with LG phones before, but the first phone that I really used on the daily and I really reviewed was the LG G2 back in 2013. It was one of my favorites, so much so that I called it the best smartphone that year. And I think it's because it had the best camera back then, better even than the Galaxy S4. Unfortunately, I dropped it in Korea of all places, actually at an LG telco trying to get a SIM card, and it smashed its screen to smithereens. Believe it or not, my first CES was in 2014, and this is where I got to play with the LG G Flex. I don't have a video of that, so I'm going to show you the G Flex 2 instead. The phone came at a time when both Samsung and LG were both experimenting with flexible displays. LG's version made more sense to me because it was candy bar shaped, just slightly convex. So it matched the curves of your and if you put it in your pocket, even if you sat on it, it would bend and flex, but once you took it out of your pocket, it would go back to normal. I also like that its back was made of some self-healing material that would repair minor scratches and scuffs over time. I still wonder why we never got that feature ever again. next LG phone that I really liked was the LG G4 for a variety of reasons. This could be the first time that we actually saw leather, real leather, used on a phone. Not faux leather, actual leather. And it came in like a dozen colors. Despite that, the back was still removable, meaning you could also pop it out and put in a new battery. The G4 wasn't the first phone I did on the Gadget Match channel, but it was my first unboxing video as your gadget matchmaker. It's also special to me because this is how I met my good friend Nicole Scott of Mobile Geeks. Back then, we were both based in Asia and we found ourselves in Singapore for a regional launch event. Back then, also, I didn't have review devices come early, so me and Nicole were the last two people standing at the event filming at the event venue until they kicked us out. And that's how I knew we would be friends for life. Nicole and I did our first video together a few years later in Berlin, and it was about Zoom versus Ultra Wide, where we compared the Galaxy Note 8 versus the LG V30. And in that video, she tricked me to say this. I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks, and I'm the kind of gal who likes a wide angle. And I'm Michael Josh from Gadget Match, and I like zoom, 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 and the boom, boom. Later that year, LG introduced the V series, and it's got to be one of my favorites that LG has ever released. I loved its rugged aesthetic, including its rubber back and stainless steel frame. It also has a cool ticker display up top. The V10 was a precursor to some of LG's best smartphones to date. 
A year later, I still wasn't important enough for LG to send me review devices early, but in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, they lent me the new G5 in all of its colors. And this is an exciting time for LG. While the concept didn't take off, I still think the idea behind a modular smartphone is ahead of its time, possibly still in our future. Imagine you could pop in all sorts of modules to give the phone added functionality and to make it better. A better camera, better audio, longer battery life. But where LG and the G5 deserves the most credit is for the addition of the ultra wide angle camera before Apple, before Samsung, before the whole industry did it. There was LG and the G5 and perhaps we have them to thank for it. The last few years that followed were rough for LG, and this is where it seems that they stopped getting love from creators. I do remember the G6 and how LG challenged me to dunk it into a tiny washing machine. That video was fun to make. I will say that around this time, LG really came into its own. For example, the V30 is where they embrace their own design language. That said, the phones we saw from LG over the next few years weren't particularly exciting, even if they did excel in terms of audio quality. Currently, the longest video that I've ever done on this channel, longer than 30 minutes, is on the LG V60. Thank you. I spent so much time reviewing that phone because I believed it was so underrated and didn't get the attention it deserved. It was also one of the first few phones that LG shipped with a dual screen case. Another feature that didn't get a lot of love, but still groundbreaking in its own right. LG's approach to multitasking on a smartphone is perhaps ahead of its time in the sense that the operating system, Android, isn't just ready for two screens just yet. I'd like to think that it paved the way for the likes of the Microsoft Surface Duo, which also didn't take off, not because two screen phones are not a great idea, but more because the software isn't just ready to support the promised experience. Last year, apart from the fact that my review unit came in gray, I loved what the LG Velvet aimed to accomplish. Offer an affordable phone with features most users needed and nothing more. By the way, we actually have another LG Velvet video that we haven't published comparing the MediaTek and Qualcomm versions. Let me know if that's something you're still interested in and I might just hit the publish button. And finally, the LG Wing, which is a phone I never got to review because it arrived late and by the time it arrived, I had other things on my plate. I will forever cherish this device as it was my last LG smartphone. It actually arrived a few days after my birthday last year and I was on my roof hanging out with some of my friends, safely of course, and it actually arrived with some chicken wings, which was a fun play on the phone's name. The wing was cute, not necessarily practical, but it was also refreshing to see LG continue to experiment. And it's kind of unfortunate to see that their journey ends here, at least for now, you never know. Earlier this year, we saw LG tease their rollable phone concept. That's another something we're never gonna get. I know some of you might be wondering, why are you so affected by this news? Well, not only has LG been a part of my journey as a content creator, not only have I met a lot of great friends who are LG Mobile employees, but if you really think about it, LG has left an indelible mark in our industry. And while they might not have always ended up on top, I think we can all agree that the smartphone world today just wouldn't be the same without them. And for that, thank you, LG, or LG, thank you. Guys, tomorrow we're going back to regular programming and brace yourselves, we have a lot 
and I mean a lot of videos coming your way. So to make sure you don't miss any of that, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, including big news like this one, make sure to make Gadget Match your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.